When initiating an intestinal organoid culture from mouse primary tissue, the first step is to isolate the intestinal crypts. Before you begin, remove the bottle of intestinal basal medium from the refrigerator and place on the bench top to warm to room temperature. Remove the vials of intestinal organoid supplement one and supplement two from the freezer and leave them to thaw at room temperature. To make the complete medium, add five milliliters of supplement one and five milliliters of supplement two to the bottle of basal medium. Replace the cap and mix the medium well by inverting the bottle several times. The medium must equilibrate to room temperature before use. You will require 12 milliliters of complete medium for this protocol. To avoid repeated freeze-thaw cycles, aliquot any unneeded complete medium and refreeze at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Unfrozen medium can be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for up to one week. Intestinal organoid growth medium does not contain any antibiotics. You will need to add your desired antibiotics before using the medium in your experiment. We recommend using gentamicin at 50 micrograms per milliliter. Also thaw 500 microliters of Matrigel matrix by placing the vial on ice. We recommend using growth factor reduced and phenyl red free Matrigel matrix, available from Corning Incorporated. Cool PBS without magnesium and calcium as well as DMEM F12 on ice. Place gentle cell dissociation reagent on the bench top as it should be at room temperature for this procedure. Place a tissue culture treated 24 well plate in an incubator at 37 degrees Celsius. Sacrifice a mouse according to applicable ethical regulations and harvest 20 centimeters of small intestine proximal to the stomach. Place the harvested intestine in a 10 centimeter dish containing five milliliters of cold PBS. Gently flush the intestine with one milliliter of cold PBS by inserting a one milliliter pipette tip into one end of the tube. Using small scissors, cut the intestinal section open lengthwise. Open the intestine using forceps, such that the lumen of the intestine is facing up. Wash gently three times with one milliliter of cold PBS using a micropipette. Transfer the intestinal section to a clean 10 centimeter dish containing 50 milliliters of fresh cold PBS. Use the forceps to move the intestinal section through the clean buffer to rinse thoroughly. Add 15 milliliters of cold PBS to a 50 milliliter conical tube. Using forceps, hold the washed intestine by one end over the tube. Starting at the bottom, cut the intestine into two millimeter long pieces, allowing them to fall into the buffer. Wet a 10 milliliter serological pipette with PBS. Throughout the procedure, you will need to pre-wet pipettes and pipette tips before manipulating intestinal pieces or crypts to prevent the tissue from sticking to the wall of the pipette. Gently pipette the intestinal sections up and down three times using the pre-wetted serological pipette. Let the intestinal pieces settle by gravity. This takes approximately 30 seconds. Gently remove the supernatant. Leave enough of the supernatant in the bottom of the tube to just cover the intestinal sections. Add 15 milliliters of fresh cold PBS and repeat rinsing the pieces by gently pipetting up and down three times with a pre-wetted 10 milliliter pipette. Repeat this procedure 15 to 20 times or until the supernatant is clear. Resuspend the tissue sections in 25 milliliters of room temperature gentle cell dissociation reagent. Incubate at room temperature for 15 minutes on a slowly rocking platform. Let the intestinal pieces settle by gravity for approximately 30 seconds before carefully pipetting off the supernatant. Again, leave enough supernatant in the bottom of the tube to just cover the intestinal sections. Resuspend the intestinal pieces in 10 milliliters of PBS containing 0.1% bovine serum albumin. Pipette the intestinal pieces up and down three times. Wait approximately 30 seconds to allow the majority of the intestinal pieces to settle to the bottom. 
gently aspirate the supernatant using the same pipette, leaving the intestinal pieces in the bottom of the tube. Pass the collected supernatant through a 70 micrometer filter and collect the filtrate in a new 50 milliliter conical tube. Discard the filter and label the collected suspension as fraction one. Place this fraction aside on ice. Add 10 milliliters of fresh PBS plus 0.1% BSA to the conical tube containing the intestinal pieces. Resuspend the pieces by pipetting up and down three times. Allow the intestinal pieces to settle, then collect the supernatant and pass through a new 70 micrometer filter into a new tube. Label the collected suspension as fraction two. Repeat this process two more times to give fractions three and four. Centrifuge the four fractions at four degrees Celsius and 290 RCF for five minutes. Pour off the supernatant carefully, leaving the pellet in the tube. Resuspend each of the pellets in 10 milliliters PBS buffer containing 0.1% BSA and transfer to new 15 milliliter conical tubes labeled with the appropriate fraction number. Centrifuge the four fractions at four degrees Celsius and 200 RCF for three minutes. Single intestinal epithelial cells that have been dissociated during the crypt isolation will not be pelleted during the centrifugation. These cells can be poured off with the supernatant. What remains in the tube will be the pelleted crypts. For each fraction, resuspend the pellet in 10 milliliters of cold DMEM F12. Assess the quality of each fraction by examining one milliliter of the suspension in one well of a six well plate under an inverted microscope. The best fractions to use for subsequent steps are enriched for intestinal crypts. Culturable crypts can be of various sizes and will appear like small folded sections of an epithelial monolayer. Fractions that are not enriched for culturable crypts contain higher concentrations of villi, single cells, or debris. Select one or two fractions to use for organoid culture. Most often, fractions three and four will be the most enriched for culturable crypts. If these latter fractions have too few crypts or are compromised in another way, you may choose to use fractions one or two. For your selected fraction or fractions, Take 10 microliter sample using a pre-wetted pipette tip and deposit on a glass slide or hemocytometer. This aliquot will be used to estimate the total number of crypts in the fraction. Count the crypts in the sample aliquot using an inverted microscope. Again, the crypts look like small folded sections of epithelium. Do not count single cells or large multi-layered fragments of tissue. Take the number of crypts counted in the 10 microliter aliquot and multiply by 100 to get the estimated number of crypts per milliliter in the crypt suspension fraction. Calculate the volume of crypt suspension containing 500, 1,500, or 3,000 crypts. Transfer the required volumes to three labeled 15 milliliter conical tubes. Centrifuge at four degrees Celsius and 200 RCF for five minutes. Pipette off the supernatant. The pelleted crypts are now ready to culture in a one-to-one -one mixture of culture medium and matrigel. To the pellet in each tube, add 150 microliters of room temperature intestinal organoid growth medium. Retrieve the pre-warmed 24 well plate from the incubator and place it on the bench top in readiness for plating the matrigel mixture you will make up in the next step. Add 150 microliters of undiluted matrigel to the crypts and culture medium in each tube. Pipette up and down 10 times using the same pipette tip to thoroughly resuspend the pellet. Avoid introducing bubbles. Slowly pipette 50 microliters of each concentrated crypt suspension into the center of each of four wells of the pre-warmed 24 well plate. The samples should form domes in the middle of each well. Being careful not to disturb the matrigel domes, place the plate in an incubator at 37 degrees Celsius. Incubate for 10 minutes to set the matrigel. Add 750 microliters of room temperature intestinal organoid growth medium to each well by pipetting the medium gently down the sidewall of the well. Be careful not to pipette the medium directly onto the domed cultures. Add sterile PBS to any unused wells to reduce evaporation of medium from the plate during culture. 
Place the lid on the culture plate and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius and 5% carbon dioxide. Typically, the crypts form spherical structures about three hours after plating and begin to bud after two to four days in culture. The culture medium should be fully exchanged three times per week. Aspirate the existing liquid medium, keeping the pipette tip at the edge of the well bottom. Replace with 750 microliters of fresh room temperature in testicled organoid growth medium. After seven to 10 days, the organoid cultures are fully mature and ready for passaging. Organoids will expand and exhibit crypt budding over the five to seven days following plating. Organoids should be passaged between seven and 10 days post plating to prevent overgrowth and excessive accumulation of debris within the lumen. For a detailed protocol for passaging intestinal organoids, watch the video Mouse Intestinal Organoid Passaging. Intestinal Organoid Growth Medium, the next dimension in intestinal research.